Hello and welcome again. Last time we saw that to compute uh, the, uh, the greatest common divisor between two numbers, uh, the factorization is useful as long as the numbers are not uh, that big. So let me show you here what we did last time. So last time we discussed the factorization of this 1000 factorial minus 1 and we saw that took a very long time. So it's not really uh, feasible if you want to compute the GCD between two numbers to uh, rely only on the factorization of the number because that might take a very long time to do. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to apply another method which is called the Euclidean algorithm. Now this is in fact an algorithm and it's going to take uh, two numbers A and B that are non, uh, not both of them equal to zero and it's going to compute the greatest common divisor between those two numbers. Now we're going to assume, uh, just for the sake of uh, clarity, that A is bigger than or equal to B, bigger than or equal to zero. Now, that is okay to assume because remember, when we compute the GCD between two numbers, we only have to do it for positive numbers because for negatives, it is exactly the same thing. So the GCD be, uh, of two numbers, A and B, if one of them is negative, is the same as the absolute value. So we don't need to do that. And we're going to assume uh, that A is bigger than or equal to B. Uh, that's not a problem. If A is less than B, just switch the the order in the, of the GCD that doesn't change uh, the greatest common divisor. So we're going to assume A bigger than or equal to B bigger than 0. And the reason for that is because we're going to do division. The Euclidean algorithm, the base of that, it, is, it uses repetitive division. At least one of the algorithms is like that. There are others that use uh, subtraction, the other the use remainder, all of those kinds of things. But in this one is going to use a repetitive division. So how are we going to start with this? So assuming that again A is bigger than or equal to B, the first thing we're going to do is, of course, division. So we're going to take A and we're going to divide it by B. When you do that division, remember the division algorithm, which is not actually an algorithm, is going to give you a quotient Q0 and a uh, remainder R0. The reason I'm using a 0 here is because we're going to repeat this process again and again and again. So once you do that, so A here is the dividend, B is the divisor, Q in this case is the quotient, and R is the remainder. And remember, one of the properties of the division algorithm is that the remainder it has to be positive and it has to be less than the divisor. Now, you're going to repeat this process, and the process is going to be like this. You're going to take now B, that is the divisor, and divide it by the remainder, as long, of course, that the remainder is not equal to zero. Now, if remainder is equal to zero, then you're going to stop the algorithm. So that's the stopping part of the algorithm. Whenever you get a remainder that is zero, then you stop. So we're going to do that. We're going to take B, the divisor, divided by the remainder. So in this case, it will be B divided by R0, so we're going to take B divided by R0. If we do that, then again we're going to get a quotient and we're going to get a remainder. So the quotient, I'm going to call it Q1 because it's another quotient different from this one in general, and another remainder call it R1. Now again, the property of the division algorithm, remember, is that this remainder is positive or zero, and is less than the divisor. Now the divisor here in this case is R0, so R1 has to be less than R0. You repeat this process again. The process is basically the following. You take the divisor of the previous of, uh, of this one here, the next one, the next up, uh, will be the divisor divided by the remainder. So the next is, uh, step will be R0 divided by R1. So you take R0 divided by R1, again by the division algorithm, you're gonna get a quotient and a remainder, quotient Q2, remainder R2. And now we, I'm using different numbers because they are in general, the Qs here and the Rs here are in general different. Now in this case again, we're gonna use the R2 is positive or zero and is less than the divisor, in this case is R1. And you repeat the process again, then the next thing will be R1 divided by R2, and the next one will be R2 divided by R3 and so on and so forth. Now this process has to stop, and the reason it has to stop is, as you can see here in these inequalities, the R's here are decreasing. So you have R0, R1, and then R2 decreases, and because all of these are integers, then at some moment you need to have a zero there, because otherwise you cannot have an infinite number of integers between 
two effects integers in R0 and N0. So at some moment we will stop. So whatever that remainder is where it stops R, M will be equal to zero. And the final non-zero remainder is the GCD. So whatever the remainder before this one, before the remainder that was zero, that remainder will actually be the GCD of the two numbers. Now, this process that I described here is, I, I know this looks a little bit um, intimidating maybe because it has a lot of letters, a lot of indices, but it's actually a very easy process to follow. It's just, just start dividing and dividing until you get the remainder equal to zero. Now, the advantage of this process is you can see here in any, in no way we need to factor the integers a and b. And so that's why it makes it easier that way because we don't have to find the factorization, which remember is it is uh, hard to do if you have really big integers. So we're going to go until the final remainder is zero and then the previous remainder that will be the greatest common divisor. Now let's let's look at an example because I think the best way to understand this uh, how this works is uh, with examples. So let's say we want to find the greatest common divisor between 120 and 84 using the Euclidean algorithm. Now this is the, the same example we did with factorization. Now I don't have to do the Euclidean algorithm for this one because factoring these integers is easy. But just to give you an example, again, let's do it here for for these two these two numbers. 120 and, and 84. We know that the answer is 12. So we have to get 12 from out of here. So the, what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, the pair of numbers and we're going to divide the largest by the smallest. So this is the dividend. In this case, the dividend will be 120 and the divisor will be 84. So we're going to do the division here. So just normal division, the one that you do in, in primary school. So it's going to be 120. I'm going to divide it by 84. All right, so that's what the first thing we're doing. So taking the largest number divided by the smallest number. Now, once you do that, we, well, of course, let's go through the algorithm. So how many times is 84? 120, just only one time. So remember what you do is you take this number, multiply it by this one. So that gives me 84, subtract. I know all, all of you have, I know you know how to do this, but let's go through the algorithm with this easy example so you so you understand what to do with other numbers. So in this case, I'll get a 36 here. Remember, the next step, this will be a step number one. So let me mark that with a number here. A step number two will be to take the divisor and divide it by the remainder. So I'm going to take the divisor, that is 84, and I'm going to divide it by the remainder, which is 36. So let's do that. So I'm going to take 84 now. So let me write it down. I'm going to take 84 and divide it by 36. So let's do the process here. Let's have a uh, 84 here. And I'm going to have a 36 over here. Now I have to see how many times is 36 and 84. It's a twice. So it's two times. Now 2 times 36 is a 72. So minus 72 here. And I subtract and I get 12. So that will be step number two. Now the remainder is still not zero, so I repeat the process until I get remainder zero. Now I'm gonna take the divisor divided by the remainder. So that will be the next step. So the step number three will be take that number, the divisor of the previous computation, that's 36, and divide it by the remainder, which is 12. So let's do the computation here. So I have 36 divided by 12. Now in this case, it goes exactly three times. And of course, I get the remainder zero. That's when you know you have to stop. Once you get the remainder zero here, we need to stop the computation and the greatest common divisor will be the previous remainder, which is this one here, 12. And as you recall from the other example, the GCD of those two numbers, 120 and 84 was in fact 12. So we can make the conclusion here and say that the greatest common factor between 120, uh, 120, not 28, 120 and 84 is 12. 120 and 84 is 12. And that is, that, that's it. There's nothing else uh, here. Now, all those letters that, or all this notation that I did before, let me scroll up here. All this notation that I had here is basically just uh, what I just did. So you always take 
I will take the start with uh, the largest here a divided by the smallest number b you get quotient and remainder then you take the divisor and the remainder of that and do it again remain uh, divisor and remainder and do it and then you do it again and then you do it again until at some point we got a zero the previous one the final non-zero remainder will be the gcd so in this particular case we had that our rm here in this case was zero so the previous one is 12 so that would be the gcd between the two numbers so that's how you compute this and then, and again the advantage of this algorithm is that you don't have to actually uh, factor the numbers now there's also something important here is if you want to actually do this um, program it is actually very easy to do uh, this is the pseudocode for the algorithm the one that we just did so it's a while loop that we have here and this b not equal to zero means that we're gonna run this until the remainder is not equal to zero so here b will be playing the role of the remainder every single time and as you can see here b is the remainder of a divided by b now because we want to do this interchange here the divisor in the next round the the uh, the, the notation here let me go back here just to understand what is the, going on in here so basically what we are doing is that variable b it will be the remainder because uh, here the variable will be here in this case uh, will be the remainder of the two because what I want to do in the next one is as the algorithm says you to always take this and divide it by the remainder so we're starting with thinking about B as the remainder so always the last one at the remainder and the divide and here over here so that's what we call B in that case now if you follow that algorithm you will find the GCD between the two numbers a and B I'm assuming that B is not equal to zero now in, if in case that B will be zero for example if the GCD between a number and zero is the non-zero number so you don't have to actually apply the algorithm with B is zero now if B is uh, zero again you don't have to run this code because if one of the numbers is zero and the other one is not zero the GCD will be the non-zero number in absolute value so I'm going to return a that a will be the the greatest common divisor between the two all right one more thing I want to mention here uh, again I'm not going to explain this a while anymore because it's, uh, you can see here this is very easy uh, steps here if you follow these steps you will get the GCD between the two numbers now the thing that I want to mention here in this this is actually important is that not only we can compute the GCD between a and b there is a relation between the GCD a strong relation between the GCD between a and b and of course the numbers a and b and the relation is this you can always take the GCD whatever the number is it can always be expressed as a multiple of a plus a multiple of b other way to say would be that uh, the GCD is a linear combination of a and b now that's just words doesn't matter how you call it the important part here is that the GCD is a multiple of a plus a multiple of b and you can always do that so if you have non-zero not both of them zero a and b they always exist integers s and t so that you have this identity here now the s and t here do not have to be unique uh, but they do exist so in the previous example of the one we just did here so remember we know that the gcd between 120 and 84 is 12. so what this theorem here is saying basically is that 12 I can express it as a multiple of 120 plus another multiple of 84 you can actually achieve that so if you say okay this is 12 how can I express 12 as a multiple of 120 plus another multiple of 84 if you try these two values if you try s equals to negative 2 so you plug it here negative 2 and 3 equals uh, t equals 3 and put it over here you can go ahead and do that computation gene you can always go ahead and check it's gonna give you exactly 12 so that's gonna give you 12 here now the question is here okay the theorem guarantees that they exist how do we find those s and t and this will be important later for us the s and t here that this number what they are we want to compute them so how do we compute that that is something called the extended Euclidean algorithm now the one we just did here was the just the Euclidean algorithm 
that is something that's called the extended Euclidean algorithm. And what it does is it computes the GCD between two numbers, and it also gives me these two S and T that I can put over here so I can get this identity that I have. Now, we will discuss that extended Euclidean algorithm in the next video. So for what you can take from this video is, one thing, we computed the GCD between two numbers without using uh, the factorization, just using division. And also that the GCD can be expressed as a multiple of the numbers here, addition of the multiple of the numbers. So in the next video, we'll discuss the extended Euclidean algorithm.